will be demonstrating NG placement today. NGs are typically used for small bowel obstructions. So that means your patient has had a bowel, a bowel movement in several days, uh, and then an expert has confirmed or a CT has confirmed that they have an obstruction. So, of course, I'm going to make sure that I have an order for my physician to place an NG and make sure that there is an order saying what level of suction, so it would be low intermittent. Typically, when you do this, it will be low intermittent to 60 to 80, and we'll go from there. So what supplies I need before I enter my room is I need a cup of water, I need a chuck, an extra basin, an NG tube, which I want to make sure the packaging and everything is intact, that uh, it's a uh, size 14 Zalo sump pump. I have a 60cc syringe, I have a safety pin, a no securing device, as well as a roll of tape just in case. I have lube, my connector piece, an extra 10cc syringe, and then my emesis bucket. Sometimes when you put these NGs in, people do throw up, so I always like to use the biggest bucket because our little emesis buckets don't hold very much. So of course I'm going to then, of course, come into my patient's room and introduce myself. Up at the door and say, uh, Mr. Howe, my name is Aaron Alvears, um, nursing instructor today. We're going to be putting in an NG because the doctor has ordered it. You have a small bowel obstruction, so this is going to help alleviate some of that pain in your stomach and hopefully maybe make you feel a little less nauseous. I'm going to, of course, it should take about 15 minutes or so. It is going to be a little uncomfortable as I'm going to put a tube down your nose and to your stomach. Once after this tube is placed, we won't be able to have any more water or food with this tube, but we can get you little swabs to keep our mouth um, moist, as we know that your mouth will be a little dry after this. All right, so I'm going to then make sure that I raise the bed up waist tight, and then I'm going to put my bed rail down. It's always helpful to have a friend, but if your patient is alert and oriented and able to hold their own cup of water, it makes it a little easier. If they have um, maybe some dementia or some confusion, and it's always best to have a second person with you to help make sure that they don't become combative or have issues while they're putting in an NG tube. Once I've got my patient waist tight up, I'm going to make sure I set them into a high balance position. So, at 90 degrees. on his chest just to help maintain, make sure he stays clean. I'm going to give him a bucket just so he can hold it in his lap. I also have a stethoscope so that when I, I can double check placement and this is just a clean procedure. So I'm going to take, uh, wash my hands and put on some clean gloves. Before I place my NG, I need to ask my patient if they've had any broken noses, any deviated septums, any cosmetic surgery, anything that's going to affect placing our tube. And then I need to check patency. So I'm going to close one there and have the patient breathe out. And then close the other there and have the patient breathe out to determine which nair I like best. I like the nair that's closest to me, so that's the one I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and get a small piece of tape ready so that I can mark my tube because we're going to measure how much needs to be inserted. So I have a tiny piece ready to go. I'm going to get one more ready just in case. And then I've got my device, everything ready to go. So I'm going to make sure before I open the tube, everything gets tested earlier, make sure that there's no holes in our packages, discoloring, that it's sealed and everything. And then I'll throw away. I'm going to take our tube out. Yes, this is a clean procedure, but you need to make sure that you still keep the tube clean. Don't lay it on any dirty linen or any dirty buckets or anything. But since our bucket's clean, I'm just going to rest the end part of our NG in our bucket. And when we measure, we measure from our nose to our ear down to our xiphoid process. I'm going to put a piece of tape there. Do you remember that's where I, that's how far I need to insert my NG? 
I'm going to have my patient hold their cup of water. I'll have my partner help with that. I'm going to go ahead and move the tip of my NG. And notice how it's kind of curved down a smidge. We're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to have our patient extend their head back into the pillow and then let them know. On the count of three, Mr. Howell, I'm going to insert this tube down your nose. It is going to be uncomfortable. Um, if you're having any distress or you need to take a break, please raise your left hand. We'll go from there. Um, once you start to cough, we're going to have you tip your head and your chin to your chest. That way it'll help make sure that we go down correctly. On the count of three, one, two, three. So insert. And you kind of twist and guide down. Once they start to cough, <coughs> tip their head forward, and they'll be taking sips of water to help guide the tube down. If you have any difficulty, take a break and twist, and insert the tube until you are past. If you also have any difficulty, you can use your pen light to make sure that it's not coiling in the back of their throat. Once we get it to our mark, we're going to tape it to our patient's nose with our securing device. On your paper, it says tape it to your patient's cheek. It's never quite secure enough, so just tape it to your patient's nose to start. You use those little tails to wrap around the front. And then we can clamp off our tube. Or we're going to do three things to check placement. So we're going to take a tiny bit of air, maybe 10 cc's. We're going to inject air into our patient. Using our stethoscope, we're going to place our stethoscope on our patient's stomach. We're listening for a whoosh. Once you've heard a whoosh, it's a good idea that you're in the right place, but it's not completely confirmed that you are. So we're going to then draw back a tiny bit of drainage or NG contents, clamp off, and then we're going to put it on our pH testing paper. <coughs> Once that's done, you're going to then clamp your patient off and send them, have them get an x-ray to confirm placement because x-rays are the best way to tell if it's in the correct place or not. Once we've got an x-ray, they've come back and it says it's in the right place, we can go ahead and then we can take our secure, make sure it's still secure to our face. If this is not sticking, we would get a new one. And then we're going to go ahead and secure our NG to our patient's gown. So we're going to make sure they have enough room to turn their head side to side and up and down. And then we can secure it with our safety pin. So just take that second piece of tape you made and wrap it around your NG, and then you can switch your safety pin through your tape so it's secure and you can't dislodge your tube. We'll go ahead and then clean up our patient. At this point, they may need to swab out their mouth just from the taste of the lube from the tube, and then make sure you remind them that um, there are their NPO, so no food or water, that um, they can still get up and move around with our tube in place. You can, after it's been confirmed, you connect con to connect it to suction to make sure that it's all hooked up. Show the suction. So, on our suction, we want it to be set to there's intermediate and continuous. So turn it down to intermediate, and then we're going to turn. Anywhere between 60 and 80, so on the green. That sounds good to us. It could be because it's not hooked up appropriately. Yeah, it's, and then you'll have your suction tubing all the way to your patient's bed.